guys. Martin Stanford is at the news wall. Martin. Dermot, yes, to add further confusion, there is a lot of information being pre-announced for 2012 or 13. so we'll keep an eye on what really is relevant in the next few weeks. Today's budget statement being billed as a budget for growth. Here's the problem, though. Inflation, those numbers coming out yesterday, two-year high, 4.4%. The Chancellor will be keen to give voters some break from the bad news. So, what do we think is in that red box? Well, we think on the fuel duty question, this is almost a dead cert now, if I can... Uh, qualified in those terms that the fuel duty escalator which would have put yet another five pence on a litre of fuel uh, come April the 1st is going to be scrapped or at least postponed or pushed to one side. Another measure thought to be uh, aimed at pleasing motorists is that the local council will get a bit more money to try and fix the roads, the potholes being a uh, pretty bad state after that severe winter. Chancellor also expected to announce measures to encourage growth, particularly in the private sector, and this includes enterprise zones. You know the sort of thing. Uh, Labour had them under a different name, but there are areas where the planning regulations are promised to be speedy, there are tax breaks and so on, to try and encourage new businesses to get on with it and start uh, conducting their business. The amount of red tape and regulation affects new and existing uh, businesses, and as many chancellors in the past have promised, let's cut some more of that red tape. Let's see to what extent Mr Osborne actually meets that promise. Holidaymakers today could get news of the planned increase in air passenger duty. You know that section of tax when you buy an airplane ticket? Well, that is going to be scrapped or postponed or parked on the long way, pushed off into the long grass, so to speak, at the edge of the runway. £36 for a family of four. It's not an awful lot of money, but it's a break. Owners of private jets don't get a break, though. They've spotted this at the uh, tax office, that uh, people who use private jets don't actually pay any tax on their flights. That is going to change exactly how it works. We wait for the detail. One of the measures, then, that is going to target the higher earners to try and bring in a bit of extra cash to the Treasury coffers, much-needed cash, the Treasury would say. Measures to tackle tax avoidance. Again, a hardy perennial, this. Many a Chancellor has said it. Uh, many of them have not been particularly successful. It seems just as they close one loophole, the tax lawyers find another one. But anyway, we wait to see what happens today on that. Now, on income tax, confusing picture this. There's already some announces and some breaks coming in on April 5th onwards for this tax year. But national insurance is going to go up, so we're going to be worse off during the coming year. What we think is going to be announced today is from 2012, April 5th, 2012, the basic allowances for most people will be at this sort of level, 8,075. That takes a whole tranche of people out of tax altogether, and it gives everybody up the tax range except those paying the top level of tax a bit of a break. But that's for April 2012 onwards. Ms. Osborne may also announce a review into a possible merger, income tax and national insurance. This is a topic which many Chancellor has looked at. Very few have actually enacted. And even if it's announced today, it's going to be something like two, three years' time, a roadmap sort of announcement rather than actual hard data. We think we may be proved wrong. First-time home buyers, real difficulty getting on that housing ladder if you can't get enough money together for a deposit. £250 million. If that's right, it's not a great deal in terms of government money, is it? But it should help out a few people uh, trying to get that fund together to do a part equity share, something like that, to get that first house. And here's another statistic that's worrying a lot of middle Britain, the number of young people who are unemployed. Nearly a million, just topping a million. Money is going to be found, we are told, or it's been hinted, for apprenticeships. So, after the cuts announced in the spending review four months ago, the Chancellor has to be hoping that today's budget will leave people feeling a little more optimistic. You can follow it, of course, on Sky News TV, our radio colleagues. If you've got an iPad, of course, you can use the latest iPad app and navigate your way, choosing whatever media you might want. All the background information will be available on that or online. Damn it. Thank you very much indeed, Martin. Well, first up this hour, bad news for two of Europe's most troubled economies. The ratings agency Standards & Poor's has downgraded Greece's creditworthiness by two notches from BB plus to BB minus on expectations that it will have to borrow more money under emergency European stability plans. It's also cut the foreign currency credit rating on Portugal by one notch to BBB minus because of the risk it may too have to borrow from the EU. In response, the yield or the interest rate on Portuguese government bonds has hit a two-year high. It's over 
0.818%. So uh, new records being struck there. Meanwhile, the UK economy shrank in the final quarter of last year, but not by as much as previously feared. With all the data now in, the Office for National Statistics says GDP fell by 0.5% in the three months to the end of December with the snow just before Christmas had to blame. At one point, it had been revised even further down by 0.6%. All eyes now turn to the first estimate of growth for the first quarter of this year that will be published next month. The Office for Budget Responsibility has already downgraded its forecast for growth for 2011 from 2.1% to 1.7 percent meanwhile our goods trade gap has widened again to its worst level since records began in 1955 the difference between what we import and what we exported in the last quarter 2010 was 26.8 billion the overall trade gap which includes services and other stuff it was over 10 billion pounds the FTSE here quick look at that for you because it was really flat yesterday pretty much a same picture I have more business news for you a bit later on Dasini, thank you.